this is the um, instructions for doing a hardness test. And it explains the use of these tools. And basically, you hold them like a pencil, and you use about the same amount of pressure you would to write with a pencil. That's what it tells you. Hold the pick at 70 degrees, like writing, like a writing pen, but use medium seven pounds force in pressing down. Now, uh, you know, seven pounds isn't much. It's not much. You don't have to uh, put much effort into it. Hang on. Tootski. Okay. So, we have a um, piece of fluorite here that um, that I use for um, testing purposes, calibration more or less. Okay, that is um, five and a half on the Mohs scale of hardness. So this. Four, come on, focus. Um, there we go. This four will not scratch it, neither will the five. Yeah, I think. Let's find out. And... I drew circles, not straight lines, if you recall. Okay. Do it again. And there's no marks. Okay. The five, we'll try the five. And once again, it, it skates like it's um, like an ice skater on ice, um, and it, it doesn't leave any marks. Um, again, I, I'm going in circles to keep it uh, separate from the ones where I did straight lines. Okay, so, the next one up is the um, <laughs> six and seven. Okay, so six should scratch this. There we go. And you can see the scratch there. Okay, so that is something between six and five. We call it five and a half. Um, opal is also five and a half. And you can probably see some of the scratches on this one because as I use this one, uh, I'm not worried about it very much, about scratching it, if you know what I mean. Um, and so I've got this nice little patch of, of precious opal in the uh, um, wood opal here. And the whole thing's opal. It's just... Um, um, it looks like a tree most of the other places. Not all the other places. See, it's got some color. Might be fun to play with, but I have uh, um, more. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it too much. Mm, and I don't <laughs> worry about it at all. <laughs> Ever.
doesn't do any good. Okay, so here we have an eight. Mm. And a nine. Nine. It's got the little line underneath of it. The six has the line on the curve on the O side. Okay. Here we have the six and the seven. Okay, quartz is seven on the Mohs scale of hardness. And quartz is um, kind of ubiquitous. It's the, um, the common standard by which we measure everything else. Um, and so I've, I've got this, um, this big overgrown Herkimer diamond that these guys, I bought them as quartz. And a seven will not scratch quartz. That is um, because it's the same hardness as, as this. Okay, so this won't either. The, the six, hmm, there's the six with the, the line by the O part, and there it is, six. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know that it's um, at least a seven. Now we've got an eight here. And this should scratch any quartz. But it doesn't scratch this. Hmm. Okay, nine, right? Nine is as hard as a ruby and a sapphire. Oops. Okay, so this nine here, and, and there's my line again underneath of it, and it's a nine, and nine is the same as uh, corundum, ruby and sapphire. And it does not scratch this. <clears throat> What this is, is a very, very nice diamond. <laughs> and diamonds form in the close-packed cubic hexagonal system. It is because all the atoms in carbon are the same size. Okay, so they line up in perfect rows and columns. And so diamonds have 90 degree angles. Okay, they, they have 90 degree angles. And, and they've got one side where the, where the point comes together right here. And see, it's flat on that side, flat, flat on this side, and it makes um, a four-sided top. One, two, three, four. And uh, the other end, that's this end. This is probably the, uh, the real Z-axis. That's where the X and Y axis of these rows and columns of carbon atoms cross each other. Okay? And that line extends from here down to here. And that's indeed what you see in there is planes of cleavage that are um, from the... Uh, Junction of of the two of two um, x and y coming together right along this this border and and if you look down here, some of the planes of cleavage are going this way and some of the planes of cleavage are going this way, and they cross each other 
right there. And it gives you a view inside the crystal of four different things. <laughs> See what I mean? Wild, huh? <laughs> so, and, and these guys have planes of cleavage, okay? Planes of cleavage are not possible in quartz. Quartz cannot and does not ever make planes of cleavage. It can't. It's made out of silica tetrahedrons. And they have a... Uh, they have a hexagonal symmetry. Not close-packed hexagonal. Hexagonal, where there's, where there's, um, even axes going this way, the X and Y direction, with one long axis, and so the the a quartz crystal uh, grows lengthwise. These grow sideways. The, 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 the sides are the actual um, focus of interest. Uh, see, we, we have to line these X and Y and Z axes up correctly in order to make diamonds do what they do. Uh, we want the... the um, the X and Y axes to be opening out. Mm. Anyway, and and this is, is how I would cut this one. I, I this is the um, bottom of the stone, and the planes of cleavage are opening. Outwards, as if I were holding my hands palm up outwards. And that makes them catch the light. And when it catches the light, that's when these things light up. And that's what good diamond cutters know. They know how how to take a look at the crystal structure and determine how to cut it to bring out the optimum. And what we have here is um, kind of a, a, a dark crystal in this one. Very nice. Um, I, I did, I got a few of these things. <laughs> really nice ones, I think. And they sold them as quartz. I, I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I've told the guy that it's not quartz at least once. But people don't listen because they already know what it is. And when you, uh, when you know you don't need to know anymore, you never learn anything new. <laughs> These planes of cleavage, this is not broken stuff inside the crystal. It's planes of cleavage. And the atoms of that particular junction um, are a notch off with each other, and that makes them stick out. But if you, if you pull up next to those, uh, the lines, you find out that they're microscopically thin. You can only see them from flat on, not, not side to side. This one's kind of cool. Look at the bottom. 
there's like a like a twin crystal inside of there. But they smoothed it off and it's inside there. Look at that. <laughs> And, and it's forming that octahedron there because it's cubic. The close-packed cubic hexagonal means it's cubic in one direction and 90 degrees out of phase the other direction is hexagonal. And, and so it's both cubic and hexagonal. And these are <laughs> 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness. And the Mohs scale of hardness, see the cool thing about science is we use numbers, and numbers don't lie. I started finding these pesky little red crystals. This is not one of them. <laughs> what this is looks like a little brown rock, but it, it weighs about um, maybe half a gram at the most. It, it's very light um, because it's made out of carbon. It's an industrial diamond crystal. It's opaque. It is 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness. And it's also made out of carbon, right? So carbon is smaller. It's a, a lesser, a smaller atom than aluminum. And it's lighter than aluminum and stronger than steel times about 10 bazillion. because it's held together by a double, double covalent bond. And so people send the um, holograms. And diamonds and gold because they do not rust they do not wear away and tarnish I can also machine this like steel I can Turn this into little thin pieces that are indescribably strong and lighter than aluminum. I have some pieces that are bigger than a Greyhound bus. So there's pictures on these. These from the Happy Rock Mine near Safford, Arizona are what gave me the idea to start looking more closely at Google Earth because there's pictures all over the Earth that are, they use mountains for brush strokes. Mm -hmm. 
Nobody in the current day knows how to do that. These holograms are the byproduct of planet art. And they use the gold platinum that I find because they can, uh, it's magnetic and it can be uh, manipulated from a spaceship uh, above the earth and they can draw pictures with mountains. <laughs>